It's a change of pace for the Cardiff Devils in January. After an up and down patch in December, perhaps a break to not only play in, but host the IHF Continental Cup final will be the spark the team needs to get back on track. Four teams, six games across three days. It'll be tough on the legs of the players, but also the staff will be working across the event to make sure everything runs smoothly. My name is Ricky. I'm senior ice technician for Vinico Arena. And I've been in the business for around 11 years. So vinyl is, uh, was a good challenge for us. Uh, it's the first time we've used it properly in the ice. Um, we've only ever used it on training courses. Um, so for us, it was a, a first time and a bit of a big challenge. It's slightly different from painting. With a vinyl, you can literally just check it in, make sure it's flat and flood up and straight away you're, you're good to go. Uh, whereas paint, the, uh, the time process for paint is almost double. Uh, you gotta make sure the paint is sealed in correctly first before you can then start laying water. Yeah, my name is Lewis. Um, I'm an ice technician for the Cardiff Devils of Indico Arena. Um, been working here for about eight years. Yeah, they in, they have life, like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, boss man was like two weeks prior, let's put the logo in. We were like, right, how are we going to get this logo? Are we going to have to, we got enough paints? Are we got enough of everything? But he was like, yep, we can get it going. We said, crack on. <laughs> do you know what I mean? He got it all in, but he ordered the, the logo down. We got the double IHF logo printed out on like, um, it's almost like a tea bag material where the water was porous, it goes through it. So it, it grips onto it a lot easier. It's, it's much better than putting paint down for a little bit of where you chuck it in for like a weekend, do you know what I mean? Working in a small crew, it does have its advantages. Um, we work very well together as a whole team. Um, whoever's not in the night shift works the day shift and they play just, a, just as important role. Um, we're lucky, we all work together as a, a great team. To be fair, like we we've done the whole thing with just me and Ricky, so like it went as smooth as possible. If anything, like we we're only a two-man team, so going throughout the entire weekend with double IHF and having everything need to be perfect, ice perfect, like pegs in perfect, no no problems with the nets, like nothing. We had not a single issue the entire weekend. Is like. God said, if anything, we've we, we done really well, we've done really well. But uh, yeah, it was it was a little bit of stressful, I won't lie, a little bit stressful, for sure. <laughs> Ooh, <sir>. Ow. <laughs> With the ice ready, the competition begins. Firstly is GKS Katowice of Poland take on Herning Blue Fox of Denmark, with the Katowice fans bringing a deafening level of support for their side. Crowd of Polish fans seemed to light a spark in their team as they broke the deadlock in the sixth minute. Chance goal! While the Polish fans certainly outnumbered the fans from Denmark, the Danes were not to be intimidated. Their cheers helped as Martin Paulson netted a brace within 11 seconds to give Herning a one goal lead after 20 minutes. Let's put on net and Tip in front, and just like that, the game's turned on its head. Herning lead, two to one. Herning extended the lead early in the second before Katowice pulled one back two minutes later to make it three to two. Shot and a goal! Shot and a goal! One, two touch pass in, out in front, goal! The sides were leveled 90 seconds into the final period and then traded a goal apiece with only 30 seconds between those goals to set up a grandstand finish, securing a point for both clubs but needing a shootout to decide who would take the extra point. Maybe chance for one more. 
No more chances in the overtime period. We go to penalty shots. And that was where John Murray stood tall in the Katowice net, denying three shots and a fourth sailing wide. And as Katowice scored on two of their attempts, it was the Polish side taking the first victory of the final round, much to the delight of their friends. Great poke check for Murray. Chance to seal it. Goal! Great stick handling from him. All night, Nick, the bar! Feed. Good save from Anderson. Great save, Murray! And Carrington do come onto the ice to celebrate the first victory of this Continental Cup final weekend. They put two points on the board. And the final score carried to five. Earning Blue Fox four. Chance to go top on day one awaits the Devils, but it's a tough rematch against Nomad Astana, where the Devils fell to in the last round when the teams met in France. Hey, sure we owe these won. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. won. yeah, we owe these f***ers won. Now look, hey, three games. It's the first f***ing game, and everybody said to me the way to win. They ain't a f***ing better chance than us right now, I can f***ing tell you that. And this f***ing ball's out, you understand? Right side of the puck, play our f***ing game, stick together and show emotion, right? Passion and emotion, boys. Come on, let's Go on, go go on, 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 yeah, guys, Waller is a guy who skates really confidently as there's a two-on-one for Astana here. And this is what the Devils were worried about, and they've been punished. As soon as the system broke down, the speed of Astana got them up ice. There's that shot comes in and is deflected. It's coming in front, and it's a goal! Down by two after quick goals by Stanislav Alexandrov and Abai Magnusbaev, the Devils would bounce back heavily out shooting the Kazakh side, but only Jamie Arneal could find the back of the net to see the team trail 2-1, heading into the first intermission. Hey, we need more in here, hey boys? We need more. Can't wait. Coming out for the second, Nomad Astana once again struck early. Listed on this competition. And it's a goal! They struck quickly in the first period. They have struck quickly again in the second. It was a much more even period though, with both sides registering 13 shots on net, but eventually the Devils would pull another one back. It's a goal that the Devils deserved for their endeavour in this second period. We carry the game. Listen, if you got to defend like motherfuckers when you have to, though, that's the key to the game. When you have so much of the puck, you can't just forget about defence. You have to defend like motherfuckers. We need a big kill here, you've been fucking great. We got to kill it. And we keep winning face offs, we got to get something off them. So don't f around so much. You just gotta win the period. That's all these terms are about, but finding a way to fing win the game. Despite Pete Russell's best efforts to rally the troops, the team couldn't find a way. When a fourth went in for Astana through Mangas by a second of the night, it made the task at hand that much harder. Just here comes off the devils in front of net and goes in. It is a cruel, cruel game here tonight in the Vindigo Arena, but Astana may have just got the goal that will see them through. Shot after shot came in, but a third goal continued to elude the Devils, 
and an empty net by Mikhail Rachmanov sealed the deal, condemning the Devils to an opening game defeat and rooting them to the bottom of the standings. It's one of the most extraordinary games I've ever seen. But Astana are going to put three points on the board to begin the Continental Cup weekend. Hi, my name's Edo. Uh, I'm the match night director here at Devils TV. I've been doing Devils TV for about six, maybe seven years since we moved into this arena. So a typical uh, webcast here would have uh, two commentators uh, following the tradition of uh, one play-by-play -play commentator plus also a colour commentator. Uh, we'd have at least two cameras, uh, one giving us a wider angle so that people can see the formations and how the team's sort of laying out the geography of the play and then one tighter. Uh, and then if we've got the luxury of a third camera operator, uh, we'll, we'll go with a slow motion camera, uh, which will give us four times the number of frames, allowing us to slow down nice, smooth footage. The Continental Cup was, was a challenge for us, not least because it's demanding on us to do two games a day, but in terms of the technology that we have, we had to make sure that it was robust enough that it would survive uh, three, four days of constant use, but also be reliable enough that we could always give the IIHF referees any replays that they wanted from the camera angles that we had. It's not just about doing the, the webcast, which of course is important for everyone to see, but we're also responsible for all of the goal line technology. So we have a dedicated replays expert, uh, and, and on a normal game, they would make sure that the replays are played out for the viewers at home, and on a game, such as a Continental Cup game uh, or even a, a, an Olympic qualifier, then we need to have a really good firm focus on the fact that goal line technology is actually really important. So having all of that thrown in the mix does actually make for a, a lot more complex setup. We always try to be uh, neutral here. Sometimes some of our uh, UK based fans they might get a view that the home commentators are always a little bit biased. We've always been proud that we try to be neutral when we call a game. Our commentators are professionals, they work in the industry, and they know the importance of being neutral when we're calling a game. That was really important to us, more so perhaps with the Continental Cup, because we've got, we've got a fan base from across Europe watching, and for them, they want to make sure that they're getting a, a fair representation of what's going on on the ice. Um, the travel restrictions, uh, their geography means that the only way perhaps that they can keep in touch with us is through a webcast. And uh, we have to put our emotions to one side and make sure that we call the game fairly uh, and neutrally so that each team gets an equal representation. When we do players to watch at the start of the game, we'll do both teams, we won't just do the home team. If we think that we play particularly badly, we'll call it out um, and we'll, we'll praise the, the opposition where, where necessary. Uh, we'll, we've always tried to be, be fair and we've maintained that through the Continental Cup. A new day and a chance for the Devils to climb the table. But first, Nomad Astana would look to make it two wins from two as they took on Hurling Blue Fox. Here we go, we are underway here in the Vindico Arena for day two of the Continental Cup. Once again, Astana wasted no time in getting going. Four check, there's a turn over here. And Astana gonna go to work, Anderson saves! Great intervention from Hansen, that's a short side attempt, but it's gone through, it's in! It's sneaked under Anderson's arm on a short side attempt. Within five minutes, they had a three goal advantage, adding their fourth right before the end of the period. And it's a goal! And there's been a few times we saw them out here, they do it, Astana winning those board battles in their own end, which immediately spring them forward, and they execute once more. Anderson, and it's put away on the rebound. 
Another two quick strikes came early in the second before Hoon finally responded with one of their own late on. Tipped in front and it's put away at the halfway point of this game. There's a huge slap shot and it's come off by Arkin in the end, I believe. And Herning do get on the ball. With the game pretty much done and dusted after 40 minutes, tempers began to flare with 72 total penalty minutes handed out in that final period alone, with both Matthias Bauer of Herning and Kirill Nikitin of Astana ejected for a pretty one-sided fight. Once the dust settled, Astana secured another three points, this time with a 7-3 victory, turning this evening's game into a must-win match for the Devils. Good evening, welcome back to Devils TV, welcome back to the Vindico and welcome to the fourth game of the 2024 IIHF Continental Cup Final live here in Cardiff. While the teams battled on the ice, the two fan bases did their bit to create one of the best atmospheres the arena has ever seen. But between the two sides on the ice, the Devils were the ones to make the most of the noise as Cole Yuri broke the deadlock with a slick backhand. Yuli! Yuli scores! Pressure, pressure, pressure from the Cardiff Devils and it finally tells. Cole Yuli returns and he scores. Devils won. It was a close first period, but eventually the Devils doubled the advantage. Ryan Barrow with the goal after a costly mistake by Katowice goalie John Murray. And Murray's going to come and try and help him out. And Neil's going to get there first. Goal! Barrow gets the tip. Murray looks on incredulously at his own bench, but the Devils get their second. The Polish side did pull one back to Kasper Messias minutes later, but after 20 minutes, the Devils held a slender advantage. Everybody's got to be in and going again. Because we want more. We need to win, boys. And you can take them to pieces if you're smart. Because we can. Hey, let's focus and let's go. Try as they might, neither side can find the back of the net in the second. One timer straight into the glove of Bound. Tyler Bush. Bush came right back at him. Early in the third and shooting towards our own fans, Katowice struck. Pick at the blue line. Olsen, goal! Neither side looked to give up and both goalies were continuing to make saves. It looked like he was going to take a moment of magic to secure the win in this one. And what a moment of magic it was by Cody Donaghy. Back it over the air! Cody Donaghy with some fantastic hand-eye coordination. And Devils return to the lead, 3-2. The baseball swing to give the Devils a lead was enough and the clock wound down on a crucial three points for the Devils. My name's Dan and I look after the uh, in arena sound screens lighting um, on a Devils match night. I've been doing it for, uh, this is my second full season um, and I did just the screens the season before that. You know when a swan swims and it looks majestic above, but underneath it's doing that? That's probably my job. So on a match night, I get here a good few hours before um, to update all the graphics, make sure that they're relevant to, the, um, to this week's game, uh, make any additions to any graphic sets, any lighting changes, um, and basically make sure everything works before doors open an hour and a half before back drop. There was a lot more hockey, but a lot less 
uh, graphics that we needed to show, things like the power play graphics, panic and kill graphics, uh, they weren't needed. However, there was more pre-production in terms of getting uh, goal songs for the other teams, making the, um, the Conti intro, as any intro, if we wanted to use, had to be um, neutral and show all the teams, not just our normal intro. It was quite difficult to get footage. Normally for Elite League, there's an Elite League hub that we can take from. We've also got um, some guy called Ollie that shoots some half decent footage. And yeah, just trying to get good footage that wasn't just normal um, game, get high, wide game angle footage. How do I make it a success? Um, basically, at the end of the day, as long as uh, the people in the stands, whether they're devil supporters or supporters from the other teams, um, they walk away having enjoyed not just the game, but the experience around it. After two days, Noed Astana had already secured the title. Their two wins were enough, especially with the head-to-head -head rule coming into play. So regardless of the devil's result on day three, the best they could do was finish second. Astana ended on a high, making it a clean sweep, defeating Katowice 3-1, so the final game would be a battle for second place as the Devils took on Herning. Doing your thing. We're going to start with the same five guys again. They're going to win the face off this time again in the zone. All right, no penalties. Don't get scored on and run the shit out of them first shift. Let's wake them up. Let's go. Yeah. It was honors even after the opening 20 minutes of play. Tyler Bush opened the scoring for the Devils before his goal was cancelled out by Magnus Carlsen just seconds later. Donahue goal! Tyler Bush with a really intelligent redirect. Herning briefly took the lead themselves to Andres Dzerzins, but Cole Yuli scored his second of the weekend to make it 2 all after the opening period. Good face-off. Dodger's gone through! Cole Yuli drives forward, and the Devils get back level. What a frantic, exciting first period that is. The back and forth continued in the second. Herning retook the lead before Yuli made his mark on the game once more, setting up a grandstand finish in the third. The Devils just don't move their feet and Herning execute with a goal. O'Neill, so in front, it's a goal! After trading chances, eventually someone found the winner and unfortunately for the home crowd, it came the way of the visitors from Denmark after the Devils ran into a bit of penalty trouble. And it's there. It was always gonna take a lot for the Devils to kill this many penalties and only take the lead with just over 10 minutes left in the third period. The drama, however, was far from over. Seconds winding down, desperation kicking in, the Devils push and push to draw a level, and as the buzzer sounded, chaos. Barrow! Shot! Save Anderson! Has it gone through? They're celebrating! Donny, I think, is trying to buy it more than it's actually gone. I don't know if they're going to have a review. I don't think they will. Oh no, they will. Wow. Dan, I'll be honest. My yeah. immediate thought is this hasn't got over and Donny, he's tried no. as best he can. He, he sold it very well. well. I don't think we're going to be able to get, see a definitive call on this one. You've got to love ice hockey and the drama of it. No goal called. I, and I, I, can't, I can't disagree with that. The goal ruled out. It was a third place finish for the Devils. A bronze medal to raise. Best defensive of the tournament honors for Bodie Wild. But for Nomad Astana, the party is just beginning. Hey!